I wanted to show you this modules, which is right under inclusive access. And here's where your start here is now. We've already talked about that. And here's where our class meeting link is also, aside from being on the front page. Here are the notes from last week, and they are complete now. There you have four videos and one class orientation, which is not linked yet. I haven't done the link. I mean, yeah, I haven't linked it. So, but let's go back to modules because I want to show you that I have most of the week two volume of uh, work up. I have my notes for what we're going to do today and my notes for what we're going to do Thursday and videos for Thursday, but not just but but not for today. So I actually get to do the videos for today today. And that makes me happy, but you get all that if you go to modules and my plan, you know how plans are, but my plan is every week to do a week, whatever notes and video so that you have my notes and my videos and they may help you. But like we talked about last time, your homework is peppered with videos already from my math lab. And some of them are actually very, very good. OK. So let's get started. You recall, I hope, that last time we talked about. We talked about. Solving equations. And today we're going to solve, uh, talk about solving linear inequalities, and they have the same rules. For instance, suppose I had, I'm just making this up right now, something like from last week, x plus three equals five, that's an equation. And I'm going to use the addition property of equality, which includes subtraction. And what I would do is I would subtract three or add negative three, which is how subtraction gets included. But let's keep it simple and just subtract three so that I get a zero here, x plus zero, which we know is, is x. But then I have to do exactly the same thing over here. I don't need that. What I do need is a minus three. So I have a minus three here and a minus three here. Has to be on both sides of the equal sign. Five minus three is two. Over on the left, x plus zero is just x. So I'll have x equals two. But today, today we're talking about inequalities and this is the addition property of equality, which means equation. So now over here, we're going to talk about the addition property and if you're guessing of inequalities you're entirely correct OK, so 
That means we don't use an equal sign. That means that I'm going to wait to do this problem until I've talked about what the inequality signs mean. This is going to be, by the way, x plus 3 is greater than 5. That's what we're going to do in a few minutes. But right now we're going to talk about the x-axis. So I need an x-axis. And the way we draw the x-axis is usually, well, there's zero in the middle, and that's where the y-axis comes in. That's the y-axis. But this is the x-axis, and this goes forever to the right, so I put an infinity sign, and forever to the left. And then all of the positive whole numbers are over here. One, two, three, four, five, and I'll put more numbers if I need to. The negative whole numbers, which are called integers, all of these together are called integers. Negative one, like the temperature's been, negative two, negative three, negative four, and negative five. And I'll go on to the left. You know, you, it goes all the way forever and ever and ever to the left. And when we talk about inequalities, now here's a five, so I will have to put more. Six, seven, and we'll stop at eight. But what this says right here is x plus three is greater than five, but really it means x plus three is to the right of five. Where to the right? On the number line, on the x-axis right here. So here's five. And x plus three is somewhere over here to the right of positive five. But that doesn't really tell us anything. Because what we want to know is what is x so that it's going to be true that x plus three is greater than or to the right of five. Notice the arrow points to the right. Therefore, it also means to the right of. So I'm going to write greater than up here. And I'm going to write to the right of down here. They mean the same exact thing. What does X need to equal so that this is a true statement? So let me, well, yeah, we could leave this up here. But what I wanna do is figure out X. All right, we are going to use the addition property of equality. Uh, no, we're not. If this were an equation, over here, we would use the addition property of equality. But no, this is an inequality. So we're going to use the addition property of inequality. But I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of this equation. Uh, inequality, minus 3 and minus 
three. That will give me X plus zero is greater than or to the right of five minus three, which is two. And since X plus zero is X, our answer, our solution is going to be X is greater than two. Now, that means that X does not equal two. It just starts over on the right side of two. Okay, so it doesn't actually touch two. It starts on the right side of two and goes to the right forever. How I draw that situation to make it clear that X does not equal two is to make a parenthesis. Rather do it like this, rather it be blue. Because that's the way it is in my math lab. And then draw an arrow. Going to the right. Forever. And this is called the graph, which I bet you would have guessed. This is one way to give the solution to the inequality. <clears throat> this is one way. Just write it. This is the solution. And notice that over here in the equation, there is only one answer. One answer, the number two is the solution to this equation right here. But over here with inequalities, the solution begins on the right side of two, and then X can be any number, any little fraction between two and three, between three and four, between four and five, and so on, and three or four or five or six or seven or eight. It can be an infinite number of numbers. This is the solution Set or X plus three is greater than five. Inequalities will always have an infinite, almost always, just let me say almost, well, no, always. It's always going to have an infinite number of solutions. But that can get really weird sometimes. Now here we have the kitten. Getting on my desk. Wanting to step on my keyboard. And wanting to play with the screen. There he is, much larger than he was when he first came to live with me. Yeah. Yeah, and much more healthy and mischievous. Um, took him to the vet, $345 worth. Yes, and you just farted, get down. He does that a lot. Okay, so we now have two ways to answer our inequality. X is greater than two. In order for X plus three is greater than five or to the right of five to be a true and to be a true statement. X has to be greater than two. X has to be to the right of two for this. To be true. Mm. 
OK, we're going to spend a lot of time on this particular problem. Because now we're going to write it. In other ways as well. There are two other ways to write the solution set. And some of you may know this, and some of you may not. Not everybody wants to go around drawing a picture every time they solve an inequality. So there are fancier, more scholarly ways to write it. So here's our solution over here. I just needed to scroll up. All right, we're going to be writing x greater than 2 in two other ways. Now, my favorite way, but there's another way too. My favorite way is called interval notation. And that's because when I took college algebra, this was the only notation taught. In other words, you just solved it. Let me write that first. Um, if we had done this problem, and we probably did when I was in college algebra, we would have just solved it and gotten that solution. We would have graphed the solution and we would have would have written the solution <clears throat> in interval notation. Interval means a group of numbers so that you can say from and to. Well, here we automatically have an interval. From to, but not equaling to, all the way to infinity, which just keeps going to the right forever. But Hey, you got to write it somehow. How this is set up with a parenthesis here and with a parenthesis here, with two on the left and infinity on the right, the way I would write this in interval notation would be left parenthesis two, comma, positive infinity, parenthesis. And that's the interval of numbers that are the solution set. I'll write solution set over here. To me, because of course I learned it, right? I learned it first. This seems very, very obvious to me. If you look at the graph, it's almost exactly like the graph. So if I can graph it, I can write interval notation. If I can write interval notation, I can graph it. But there's another form of notation. And that is. Whoops. I want it to be black there. I want it to be set builder. Notation. Nobody really likes this a whole lot because it looks scary. But first, I have to go back here, and I have to see that I've written this with the letter X. So I come down here, and I'm going, going to make a brace, that's a brace, and write X. And then I write a vertical bar. And then I write my solution. X is greater than or to the right of 2.
x is greater than 2. And then a brace. So it's not really as hard as it looks. And in fact, when you're answering questions in my math lab in set builder notation, they've already written brace x bar x. Often they have the x, sometimes they don't. So let's just say they have brace x bar and then another brace over here and your answer box is here and all you have to do is write your answer right here, x greater than 2. So there are four ways to write the answer, the solution to the inequality. There's solving and just writing the solution. There's showing it on a graph. There's writing it in interval notation. And there's writing the solution in set builder notation. One, two, three, four. You're not often asked to do all of them. You're asked to do some of them. Okay. Now. Let's see. We're going to take this same little problem here that we already have the answer for. So actually, I'm going to put a line between them. I hate it. The one flaw, the one thing I don't like about this PDF editor is that that bar appears only when I'm drawing a line. I don't know why. Okay, now, suppose that I change this just a little bit. X plus three is greater than five is going to become X plus three is greater than or equal to five. And in words, what this means is that x plus 3 is to the right of 5 and it equals 5. Now let's go back up to our first problem here. Here, x plus 3 was to the right of 5, but x plus 3 did not equal 5. Now down here in the second version of the problem, it does, it can. So now I'm going to use the addition property of equality. Uh, 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 addition property of inequalities. Inequalities. And for those of you who weren't here um, when we were solving equations, I'll show you why sub subtraction is part of the addition property. And here it is. Instead of subtracting three, what I'm really doing is I am adding the opposite of three. Well, I just don't have room. So I'm going to erase this. 
start over. X plus three. The opposite of positive three is negative three. And if you add opposites together, you get zero. So I'm adding. When I, when I subtract a positive number, I'm really adding a negative number. That's very confusing. It's a technicality in math. Algebra, rather. Now this is exactly the same thing as x plus three minus three oh, is greater than or equal to five minus three. They're exactly the same thing. Now three minus three or three plus negative three is zero over on the left. Bring down x plus. And over on the right, we'll have 5 minus 3 equals 2. So that x is greater than or equal to or to the right of and equal to 2. Now here's one way to write the solution. That's the basic way to write the solution. So let's go ahead and graph it. And notice that the graph still has a slant. There's infinity, there's negative infinity, there's zero in the middle. One. Two, three, four, five, and so on, six, and seven, and eight. And I'm not going to bother to fill in the negative side because we're not using it. All right, I am going to write x is to the right of and equal to or equal to two. But this time, because x can also equal 2, I'm going to put a bracket around 2, and I should have done that with blue, but oh well. And then draw a line to the right. Okay. This means X can equal to. This means X can be really close to two. Oh, Barbara, I can't believe you did that. There. This means, yes, what I just said. That X is to the right of two, but it can also equal two. Then, interval notation, and I'm going to write I dot N dot, will be, let's see, it'll look just like this, bracket, two, comma, infinity, parenthesis. Never put a bracket around infinity because infinity can't be hemmed in. And then set builder notation S B in is going to be X bar and then over here another brace and that's going to be what I write in here. X greater than or equal to two. So those are your four ways of writing the solution. 
if there's a bar underneath, you write a bracket. If there's not a bar underneath, you write a parenthesis. Now we're going to do the other two versions of that really quickly, having gone through the basics. Excuse me, okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, so on the set builder notation, uh, why do you um, put X and then a line and then the solution there? Why isn't it just the solution? OK, <clears throat> because it all means something. So here's what it means. Let me get rid of this. Here are the words that are hiding in there. There are a lot of words. OK. The solution set is. All right, this. That means all the numbers. on the x-axis the bar I'm going to write it right there bar the bar means that obey the following rule. Oops. Put that too far over. There. The solution set is all the numbers that obey the following rule. And this, the solution, is the following rule. Um, the numbers, X, the numbers, must be greater than or equal to, or to the right of or equal to, let's say to the right of, because that's really more correct, must be to the right of two or equal. Two, two. This set builder notation, which really says the same thing as interval notation, this stands for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight words. Twenty eight words are all stuck in there. That makes a lot more sense now, thank you. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. I'm glad you were interested. Anybody else? 
Barb, when you read it, is that when you have to say um, X is such that something like yes. that? Like, OK, yes. the quicker way to say it is X such that X is greater than or equal to two. Kind of a shorthand way to say it. OK. Now. We're also going to have. Let me look back here. I don't want to make a mistake. X plus three. You know, there has to be a less than. X plus three. Is less than five. And you can also say strictly less than so that the person listening to you knows that there is not a bar underneath. Not a bar. No bar. OK, again, we use the addition property of inequalities. Subtract three from both sides. So we'll have X is to the left of or less than two. And then the way to graph this. Infinity, negative infinity, zero in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. Here's two. And negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. And these should be the same distance apart as these, but it's hard to do when you're writing it. OK, anyway, so now we're talking about to the left of, which is the same as less than. So we're talking about all the numbers to the left of two, but not equal to two. These numbers start really, really close to two on the left hand side, but they don't include the number two. And then interval notation. Looks almost exactly like the graph. Only now. Interval notation is on the left. You always put on the left here what's on the left when you draw the line. So negative infinity is on the left, comma, two is on the right, parenthesis. And set builder notation is Brace X bar X is less than two. Brace. Or if you prefer the solution set consists of all the numbers on the X axis that obey the following rule that X has to be to the left of two. And finally, let's see if we can fit it in here. I don't know if we can. X plus three is less than or equal to, or to the left of, or equal to five. And we subtract three, 
and subtract three. X plus zero is less than or equal to two. X is less than or to the left of two. So I draw my x-axis, which is also called the number line. Zero. One. Two. Try to put them equally far apart this time. Negative one. Negative two, negative three, and so on. And this time, it's going to look like this, only the parenthesis is going to be a bracket. Line going to the left, and an arrow. And interval notation. Negative infinity to two. Remember, we always move left to right. We're really going to talk about that a lot on Thursday. Um, two with a bracket, which means the line actually starts at two. And S. SBN. When I lived in Atlanta, there was an SBN network, Southern Broadcasting Network. So I smile every time I look at it. Um, so is it SBN? Set builder notation. Yes, it is. All right, brace X bar X less than or equal to two, brace. And I might as well write addition property. I'm just gonna say add prop and add prop. And then I'm going to go back to 100%. and make it a little smaller so we can look at the whole page. There it is. We started out going greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. So there are always those four possibilities. And if you want to, you can include the equal sign as the fifth possibility. Okay. No. No, hello, Barb, Earth to Barb. There. All right, now I'm going to use um, the multiplication property of equalities. actually singular equality, which means equals. Okay, the multi blah, 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 blah. 
the multiplication property of equality. And I'm going to make this up. How about 5x equals 9? And since I need 1x equals a number, I have to figure out how do I poof, turn 5 into a 1. And I can do that technically by multiplying by one fifth on both sides. But, uh, 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 no, wait, I have to change it. Please forgive me. 45, because I want the answer to be 9. 45. Okay. All right, so another way, I mean, I can multiply both sides by four by one fifth because it's the multiplication property, but multiplying by one fifth is the same as dividing by five. And in this case, dividing by five is so much easier. Five over five is one. If you put that in your calculator, you'll see it's true. So I have one times X on the left and 45 divided by 5 is 9, so x equals 9. And we can apply this same property to inequalities. The multiplication, I have to save this, wait a minute. I know it's, it's just, if, if I don't save it, it's going to die on me. Okay, uh, solve linear inequalities Tuesday, Thursday. Okay. <sighs> All right, now we're going to use the multiplication, and I'm not going to do four different ways. Multiplication property of inequalities okay. And so, how about 5x, 5 times x, is less than or equal to 45? I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did up there, divide by 5, because I have to get x by itself. 5 over 5 is 1. 1 times x is just x. Is less than or equal to 9. So let's check this out. I'm going to graph it. infinity, negative infinity. I'm going to put zero down here. You can do that as long as you're making the scale. One, two, three, four, five. I can count six, seven, Eight. Uh, 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 uh. Can I? Can I really? Nine. And then we start down here with negative one. Okay, now all of my X numbers, and there are a whole bunch of them, all the numbers going forever to the left of nine, or actually equaling nine. So I will put a bracket at nine and notice how these upper prongs 
they're kind of pointing to the left. You don't put an arrow on them, but I think of them that way because I have to be sure that I uh, make my arrow go the correct way. And notice that when the X, when the X is on the left or any variable is on the left, this is going to tell you which way to go, which way to move your arrow. So here we go. Uh -huh. I hate it. Go away. My one complaint, like I said, pretend that's an arrow. Oh, well, what the heck? I'll get rid of that. Let's try it again. There. Okay. So let me get rid of these arrows. The arrows aren't really there, but they can be in your mind. OK, so there's the graph. And interval notation is going to look just like it. So we're going to put a parenthesis around negative infinity. Negative infinity is on the left here, so it's on the left here. Comma, we look to the right. The number on the right is 9. Bracket. And that's the part of the x-axis that contains all of the numbers that would make 5x is less than or equal to 45 a true, a true statement. And, and what else? There's SBN. Okay. We're going to make a brace and an X bar. And um, um, this, I'm going to write that. X is to the left of or equal to nine. Or it could also, if you were working with money, then you would think less than or equal to. Maybe your profit is less than or equal to nine million. Or nine billion. Ooh. It doesn't make any sense, but, you know, in money, you actually use less than and greater than. You don't you don't graph them usually. Well, they're on a graph. Yeah, never mind. I didn't say it. OK. All right, now. Now that we have done a basic problem using the multiplication property of inequalities, we get to the part of inequalities that many of you remember. With fear. And loathing. Namely, negative three times X is strictly greater than nine. Okay, and we're going to use the multiplication. property of inequalities. Now watch carefully. I am going to divide by negative three and divide by negative three. And because I divided by a negative number, I'm going to mark through the inequality sign and turn 
it around the other way. So that negative three over negative three is positive one, or you can think of it as, as negative over negative, they cancel each other out, and three over three, they cancel. Whenever everything cancels like that, you have a one, not a zero, a one. Less than positive nine divided by negative three is negative three. So X is to the left of negative three. And this is your solution. And you can express that in four different ways. You can express it this way. Whoop. Or you can graph it. Or you can use interval notation. Or you can use set builder notation. Now we're going to do this. How about negative one fifth equals seven thirds? Ah, wait a minute. X. Yes, negative one fifth X equals seven thirds. Okay. When I've got a fraction in front of the X, I have to multiply both sides of the fraction by the reciprocal of the fraction in front of X. So, this is negative one fifth. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation. Do it in blue. By negative five over one. And by negative five over one. So what I have over here is negative five over one times negative one over five. And the reason this works is that negative times negative is positive. A five up here cancels a five down there. A one up here cancels a one down there. Everything is canceled, so I have a one in front of my X, even though I canceled the ones. And one times X is X. Now I come over here. Uh, five will not cancel three, three will not cancel five or negative five, and seven will not cancel one, one will not cancel seven. Actually, it could, but it would be kind of a redundancy. So instead, what we're going to do is, since this is positive, seven thirds is positive. Positive times negative is negative. I'm going to multiply the two numerators together. Seven times five. And I'm going to multiply the two denominators together. Three times one. And what is that? What is that? Why is that mark there? I have no idea. 
Oh, I think it was supposed to be part of an equal sign. And so negative seven times five over three times one is going to be negative 35 over three. And those are in lowest terms. X equals negative 35 over three. Or you can bring this down like that. Now, you can't be 100% sure, or maybe you can, that that can't be written in lower terms. You always have to write fraction answers in the lowest terms. This is an equation. Okay, so I'm get doing the equation first. So I'm going to draw a I was going to draw a line. I'm going to draw a line down here. There. Here. Okay. Now what I want to do is this. Uh-uh, no, not what I want. Detach LCD. Ooh, nice and big. Okay. going to take negative 35 and divide it by 3. And instead of hitting enter, I'm going to hit the math key right here. Math. Frac is going to give me the fraction in lowest terms. So I hit 1 and I hit enter. And negative 35 over 3 is the only answer. So it's good to have your, your calculator handy. Any scientific calculator will do that for you, I believe. All right, so this is our answer. Now, what am I going to do? I am going to just real quick, do this. Negative one fifth X is strictly less than seven thirds. Now I have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative one fifth, and that's going to be negative 5 over 1, just like I just did. But I have just multiplied both sides of, it, of an inequality by a negative number. I don't have to turn an equal sign around, but I do have to turn um, an inequality sign around when I multiply or divide both sides or divide both sides by a negative number. So if I divide both sides by a negative number, I have to turn the sign around. If I multiply both sides by a negative number, I have to turn the sign around. Now the same thing is going to happen. Negative times negative is positive. Five cancels five, one cancels one. I'm left with an X. Uh, and over here, I'm going to have negative 35 over three, so that X is strictly greater than or strictly to the right of negative 35 over 3. So when you multiply or divide any number, well, any inequality, both sides 
by a negative number. If you divide by both sides by a negative number, if you multiply both sides by a negative number, then you have to turn the sign around. What about when it's positive? Oh, if it's positive, you don't turn the sign around. You do not. Only when it's negative. Good question. OK. Let's take a break and we're going to apply this to the um, to the next um, assignment that we have set for today. OK, so let's take a break. I'm going to restart my computer and I'll come right back. 